This is lesson three of data analysis and it is called drawing bar graphs. So last lesson you learned how to draw pictographs. Now we're going to look at um, drawing bar graphs. So um, there's a few things that you need to know. First thing that you need to know is that a bar graph can be drawn vertically. So it goes from top to bottom. I mean bottom to top. Or it could be drawn horizontally. That means across. So you're going from left to right. Okay, that's the first thing that you need to know. There's examples to show you what that would look like. Um, the next things that you need to know are down below. And so you can follow along on your sheet, but it says that bars on a bar graph need to be of equal width on the grid. So that means that each one of these is the same width. We don't have a little skinny one and then a wide one and then a medium one. They're all the same length or same width, sorry, they're all different lengths, but they're all the same width. So that's what you need to make sure that you do. You also need to make sure that the length of each bar represents the value um, of the data. So jazz here represents 70, and so they've drawn up to 70. Okay, um, you need to include the numbers on one axis of the bar graph to show the scale. So this would be the axis, and by the way, this is an axis and this is an axis. That's what we call those. This would be the vertical axis, and this would be the horizontal axis. But anyways, you need to have numbers on at least one of those, uh, because that shows you the number of people, or the number of objects, and so on. Okay, and it needs to be in a scale. So the scale of this one is each line actually equals five. We have writing for every other one. So it goes 10, 20, 30, 40, but you'll see a line in between each one, and so it, the scale is actually going up by five. Okay, so that's, uh, that's that one. And then down below here is where the scale is on the horizontal axis. Okay. Uh, the next thing that you need to do <laughs> is, um, well, again, with the scale. So not only does it need to go up by the same amount each time, so in this case, five, in this case, um, one, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, whatever, continuing on. This is different data, obviously, because this one only goes up to 14, and this one goes up to 70. But either way, it needs to go up consistently. You can go, okay, here's zero, one, two, six, 10, 14, 18, 20. That doesn't make any sense, and we need consistency, and it needs to skip count by the same amount each time, okay? Now the second thing that you need to do is you need to choose a scale that makes sense. So if we made each one of these lines worth one, like it is over here, this would be an incredibly long bar graph. Like it would be way too large and hard to read because there would be so many lines or it would be so large it would be hard to look at. So that's why we pick a scale and that's why we skip count by numbers larger than one on our bar graph. Uh, so that we can make it a small one and still readable. Okay, so you want to pick, you want your top number to be around the highest value. So this one's exactly the highest value, 70. Uh, some people might have made it go up to 80 or 75, just to give it a little bit of room at the top. Um, and say this one, per, this one did that too. So it looked at the biggest data, 14. And then it also looks at the other data. So these ones obviously always go up by uh, fives. So they're all multiples of five. So it made sense to do fives. Okay, sometimes it makes more sense to do even numbers. It just depends on the, num on the uh, data that you have um, to see what, you'd, what, what you would do, okay? Um, here are parts that needed to, need to be included on a bar graph. So there's a number of them. You need to make sure that you have a title. So right here, what kind of milkshakes do you like best? You need to have a vertical axis and a label. So here's the vertical axis, and here's the label, number of people. You need to have a horizontal axis and label. So here's the horizontal, here's the label, kinds of milkshakes. You need to have bars, bars of equal width. So here are my bars, and they're all the same width. You need to have labels for each bar. So we've got strawberry, chocolate, and vanilla. Um, and you need to have a scale that best represents the data and consistently increases. So here's the data, and it consistently increases by one each time. The biggest uh, we've got here is 10, so that's fine to increase it by one each time when the number is as small as 10. It's when it gets larger that you want to do that. 
Okay, so that's what we need to include on a bar graph. Now what we're going to do is, um, on the other side of the page, is a practice. So what I want you to do is pause the video and try to draw a bar graph that includes all of these criteria on the bar graph. And then once you're finished, then please unpause the video and, uh, and then uh, follow along with me to see that you uh, did it right. Okay, and I can't really fit both data and uh, the graph on at the same time, so I'm gonna use my sheet. You have the sheet in front of you. Um, but, well, let's just look at it first here. So we've got bottle, or I guess this is um, typical lifespan of animals. We've got a bottlenose dolphin, brown bear, a fin whale, and a pot belly seahorse. So we've got 40 years, 22 years, 85 years, and 8 years. Okay, so we need to draw a bar graph to display the data. So first, I'm going to put a title, because I always forget them if I don't put them at first. So. So typical lifespan of animals. There's no particular type of animal. We've got dolphin, bear, whale, and seahorse. So we almost could have said sea animals, but a bear is not a sea animal. Okay, um, next up, what we want to do is we need to figure out a scale. So the largest we've got is 85 years. Um, so let's see how many we have here. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So if we skip counted by five, let's see if it would work. We've got, this is always zero. The corner is always zero. Then we've got five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, 85. That's actually perfect. I didn't even plan that out. Let's just move that. Okay, so 85 goes up there. Um, I'm actually going to just write down every, every 10, like you saw before. So that's 5. I'm not going to write it because it gets too cluttered. So I'm going to skip one tick each time and just go uh, write down the multiples of 10. And there's 90. All right. Um, next, what I need to do is I need to label my axes. So this is typical lifespan, and this is animal. Okay, I gotta decide how thick I want each one to be. There's a four, and there's a whole bunch here. So I'm just gonna do a four bars each time, and then skip two. I think I should be able to do that. Let's just see, there's one, two, three, four. Yeah, that fits perfect. Okay, we wanna use up the space on our paper. So bottlenose dolphin is first, and it is 40 years. Okay, so there this is, and then I write bottlenose dolphin. Then I've got a brown bear here. And they typically live 22 years. So here's 20, there's 25. So I'm going to go slightly below halfway up this line, because halfway would be 23. Okay, so we've got bottlenose dolphin, we've got brown bear. Next up, we want the fin whale. And a fin whale can live, that's the 85 years. So we want to go all the way up and we follow exactly to 85 years. We make it the same thickness, come all the way down and there's the fin whale. And then the pot belly seahorse, only lives eight years. So here's 10, here's five. So we just imagine five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it's just slightly above half on the second line here. So we would put it right about here. And this is pot belly seahorse. Okay, I could, I could color these in and make it pretty, but that's not really necessary at this point. We're just making sure that we can include all of the proper things. So if we turn over, we can look and see if we met all the criteria. So uh, do I have a title? Yes, I have a title. Do I have a vertical axis and label? Here's my vertical axis, there's my label. Yes, horizontal axis and label. Horizontal axis, there's my label. Uh, bars of equal width. Yep, these are all equal. They're four squares apart, or four squares wide, sorry. Uh, labels for each bar. Yeah, here they are. 
and a scale that best represents the data. Well, I pretty much used uh, the entire graph perfectly. So that means that I did use a scale that best represents the data. Um, and if you only used up to here, then you did not use a scale that best represents the data because you didn't use the space provided. You want it to be as easy as possible to read. So making it large like this is easy to read. 